What if someone you lost who had died returned? This episode of AfterBuzz TV is brought to you by the powerful and riveting new drama Resurrection. You won't be able to stop watching or talking about it. Resurrection premiering on Sunday night, March 9th at 9, 8 central, only on ABC. You're not going to want to miss it. Mr. Langston, did your son go missing, sir? I have him. He's okay. My son died 32 years ago. What if someone you lost returned? Daddy! Huh? Honey, who is it? Jacob. I'm coming home. The television series event begins. You're not the only one. There's others. Tell the world Resurrection. Series premieres Sunday, March 9th on ABC. You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Glee After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Glee After Show. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us again this week for AfterBuzz After Show of Glee, Season 5, Episode 10, Trio. That's trio! Us. That's us! We're a trio, trio tonight, too! I love it! I On love point. it! I am your host, love Roxy Starr, alongside Marissa Serafini. Hello, everyone. And of course, Sarah Mendoza. Hello, everyone. Seriously, I actually like tonight's episode, but before we talk about that, mm -hmm. we want to tell our viewers and listeners about another great TV show, which we all think you're gonna like. Obviously, you heard Maria Menounos talk about it at the top of our show tonight. So we just gonna we're just gonna give you a little bit more info. Exactly. Okay. So imagine if someone you knew that had died, whether it's a grandmother, father, mother, or whoever, all of a sudden returned. Doesn't that sound interesting? That's crazy. Like I can't even imagine if my grandpa just like showed up at my doorstep. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's crazy because that's exactly what's happening in a small town called Arcadia, Missouri, on this new show on ABC called Resurrection. All these people who have died are coming back to life. Yep, it all starts with eight-year-old Jacob, and he reunites with his parents, and they're totally confused, as I would be, since Jacob actually died 32 years ago. It's crazy, but what a fun premise for a show. And of course the mystery deepens as more and more people just start returning. Yeah, I mean, just the previews alone, um, I'm sure you guys have seen them. They are so amazing and powerful mm -hmm. and have me asking so many questions. Are they really the same people? Where did they come from? And how do they fit back into this world? Yeah, all those questions, yeah, I guess you have to watch the show because it's the, all these questions you want to find out and stuff you want to talk about with everyone else. This is like the water cool mm -hmm. talk. This is why we do after shows here because mm -hmm. we just want to talk about shows afterwards. So definitely... <laughs> Every, everyone's going to have the theories and questions, and we're going to be talking about right. it. Right. It's, it's not really like the other TV shows that are out in there right now. It's not about zombies or aliens. It's totally new and impossible to guess where the story's going to go. I have to know when and where it premieres. Well, it premieres on Sunday, March 9th on ABC at 9, 8 central. Once again, that's ABC's Resurrection premiering Sunday, March 9th at 9, 8 central. Woo! Yes, I think <laughs> I know where we're all going to be. Me mm -hmm. too. And you after buzzers should totally check it out too. And now let's get back into Glee. Amazing. Okay, yes. so tonight's episode, overall thoughts. I need to know, are you guys let down? Are you stoked? Was it as good as last week? How are we feeling? Well, this was a very fun episode. Mm -hmm. I will admit that a lot of the songs were upbeat and happy, which is surprisingly because mm -hmm. there's usually the balance between the happy ones and then the more serious ones. But I felt every single number tonight was very upbeat, very energetic and happy. What I think last week's episode was more entertaining mm. but then again this episode wasn't bad either absolutely mm -hmm. i i think that um i think it's uh it was a little bit more subdued for me than last episode like after 
the first episode last week. I was so stoked, and now this is kind of like a like a middle ground type right. of energy. Combining the two comments that you guys both just gave me, I think that the reason it was um, the music was so upbeat was because the rest of the episode was a little more subdued, you know? So they were mm-hmm. trying to make up for the fact that where they lacked potentially in storyline, they they had in rhythm and beat and They and made excitement. up for it. Right. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was a good episode mm-hmm. for sure. Last week was amazing, and we know the 100th is coming up, and they can't all be the best episodes ever. But I definitely was, from top to finish, glued to the TV, wanted to watch it, needed to know what was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first storyline that, that, that we started with and then end the episode with, of course, is Will and Emma. Mm-hmm. I mean... <laughs> I, it was a little quick to all of a sudden find out they want to get pregnant at one moment and at the last moment know that they are pregnant. That was a little quick for me, even though we got a couple of montage things mm-hmm. going on in here. But I do like that they are trying. And I and let's start at the top. So yeah. Will, in his classroom teaching. Mm-hmm. By the way, he teaches history. I forgot. I thought he was a Spanish teacher. I was a little, <laughs> right. little confused. He's, He's showing hopping the map. around. Yeah. Uh, who, who even knows anymore? <laughs> I, I just think of him as Will Schuster. In the choir room. Exactly. (laughs) Like, oh, you're still a teacher here. So bizarre. (laughs) Um, But we see Emma and she comes running in and she grabs him out in the least Emma-like way possible. Uh And she, for a lack of... Uh, this is a little vulgar. Sorry, Glee fans. <laughs> but she bangs him out in the closet. That, oh. is, that is actually what happens. <laughs> I mean... That was uh, so funny because Emma, of all people, very OCD. And the minute she she came Innocent. into the room and grabbed Will, I was like, "Oh, she's ovulating, obviously." She's ovulating. <laughs> but the and then like to see them run into a closet, like one of the most dirtiest places in. Okay, she at high clearly school. she they were clearly getting dirty. scrubbed it down first. Don't fool yourself, Marissa. <laughs> maybe she probably there was probably like plastic bags and like saran wrap everywhere just to make sure everything is. In. Did you? guys watch it with the um subtitles on because no, I, 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 yes. I could have done without the mm, <laughs> in, in mm, case you ah. didn't hear her moaning. yeah i know and, and just you have to read it, it i know it was just it was just really you know what though guys like that was a, like that whole instance it was the last thing i thought that emma was going to be doing which is cool that yeah. we did that because a lot of times <laughs> we can expect where it's going and we didn't yeah. expect that she was but, like, we have to do this now. I'm like, what yeah. is it? Is it going to be like It was new? very out of character spontaneous, which Emma does not like. She does yeah. not like spontaneity. Mm-hmm. So, but I thought it was fun to watch. Well, in a way, though, it's it wasn't spontaneity in that they probably were reading those like fertility calendars and she's thinking like, well, mm-hmm. at this time on this date today, which is right now, oh my gosh, I need to go get Will and be impregnated right now because this, this calendar says that I'm th- I'm most likely to be impregnated at this people moment. People get crazy about those yeah. things they, mm-hmm. and because yeah, honestly, so there's a science to them, of course, and, mm-hmm. and people are like, wow, let, let's really do this. But I have a more general question for you guys about Will and Emma. Mm. Um, so I was sitting in one of our After Buzz screening rooms and a fan of Glee was sitting next to me. It wasn't either of you, unfortunately, because we, we have to watch different times sometimes. We do so many shows here. But mm-hmm. I was sitting next to him, and he turned to me, and he said, are you a fan of Will and Emma's relationship? And I, I hadn't thought about it in a very long time because I've kind of just taken it for what it is now. Mm-hmm. But I, I want to get your guys' opinion. Are you a fan of Will and Emma's relationship? Do you think that they're a good match? Do you even think about it like that anymore? Mm. Um, or, or what are you guys' thoughts on it? It's such an interesting question because I, I feel like we just have accepted it throughout the seasons. Right. Um, we, I think in the very beginning, I was really excited about it because I was rooting for Emma to like get her dream guy you Mm -hmm. know like she was the underdog really shy she wasn't going to be the one to go out and get him but like she got the guy um but now like i i feel like they're a boring combo i feel like they're a very (laughs) boring well the thing is they haven't really had a big major storyline since their wedding and Mm -hmm. they're they're the adult couple they're finally together after all the trials and tribulations they've gone through over the seasons i still like them they're still fun to watch they're still cute they light up each other's day and and whatnot and i Mm -hmm. think now having another thing uh they want to build a family and build a relationship in that way i that's fun to watch as a normal regular couple People are going to be rooting for them. Right. I I don't disagree with either of you, but I just think it's interesting that when I think of the show and all the couples, I don't even really think of them. Um, After 
there was no longer going to be a Finchel, I thought to myself, and, and a lot of Gleek fans thought, huh, who is the new it couple of this show? Is it Kurt and Blaine, which is what most people came up with? Mm-hmm. Um, is it Sam and whoever he's going to be with throughout the season? Mm-hmm. You know, people kept trying to think, but never did anybody say, oh, it's Will and Emma. Right. You know, um, and, I, and I do think that comes from the fact that they are a little boring these days, and I would like to see them mix it up a little bit, and maybe this kid will be the thing to do it. Yeah. I wouldn't say boring. I would say the, they're the most stable. Yeah. They're, they're and most, who wants stability, most, Marissa? Yeah. And Jeez. <laughs> that's the For thing. a TV show. Stability is something you don't have to worry about, and, and you don't get that drama if you don't have stability. Or if you do have stability, you don't get that drama. Mm-hmm. So, and like, what makes relationships fun is when they're on and off. You never know where they're going. That's yeah. what makes it more dramatic, and that's what people tune into. However, <laughs> I mean, they are very... I love it. I love the <laughs> Okay, so they are stable, and I, I agree. I do like watching them as characters because they both have such unique, like, nuances about the way they're written. Yeah. But um, for couples, I think we don't think about them because... I don't see, like, when I think of TV couples that I'm obsessed with, there's always this element of, like, crazy, passionate chemistry. And I feel like they're just a practical combination almost, more than a romantic chemistry type of combo. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I do think that, like you're saying on a lot of the shows that I watch, it's a constant battle. You're always fighting to be with that person. Mm. And and Will and Emma, for a long time, I really wanted them to be together because they were (laughs) always fighting for each other, you know? Not with each other necessarily, but for each other. Um, And now they don't need to fight because there aren't any obstacles in their way. Mm -hmm. Um, Really? And and the fact that they were having trouble conceiving, to me, was going to be the first obstacle they had faced in a while, which is why I was kind of surprised when that obstacle was overcome within a matter of minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so th- within the hour, within yeah. the hour, exa- exactly. <laughs> um, so that was interesting to me. But I, I do have to say, overall, I am a Will and Emma fan. I definitely would not like to see them break up. That is so not what I'm saying. Right. It just was a, a question. I know our yeah. viewers are going to be. I know like- they're like, what? <laughs> are you kidding me? Um, no, I, I don't think any of the three, any of this trio, would like to see that duo break up. No, I, absolutely not. But, <laughs> but I, I don't know. Maybe mix it up a little bit. Maybe we'll, we'll see something funny. We need with some this kid. spiciness in there, and they need to throw. I mean. I like the closet spiciness today, mm-hmm. tonight, mm-hmm. or faculty, whatever Hell yeah. that was. Sexy. <laughs> um, and I did like that we got a song from them this episode because yeah. we haven't been getting songs from them. And it reminded me like, oh, they, they kind of mesh together, their voices. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's Danny's song. And what did you guys think of this one? Uh, what We've got them there. They're in the room, and you know. I you... love this song. I love it's, this song too. Yeah, I mean, Kenny Loggins, you can't go wrong with him. And I, it was just so simple, and it reflected like what their family could be like. They're happy. Right. They're together. They want. They want to be together. And I thought it was very the most simple song out of all the songs because you know we get the the teenagers all singing and whatnot. But mm-hmm. this, I think, this was the only adult mm-hmm. song that we got, and it was very adult like themed it was all about enjoying the mo- they were talking about how they need to enjoy the process of getting pregnant and this mm-hmm. song was very enjoyable the whole thing was like kind of light and fun and nice it yeah was it was a throwback song which i always love mm-hmm. i have a bit of an old soul at times um mm-hmm. and and it's like it spoke to their story so perfectly because it's really about like what you said it's about like putting away your your worries like a hakuna matata type of song mm-hmm <laughs> Absolutely. I'm um, going a little bit back before the song, though. I I do want to get you guys' opinion actually on the fact that Beast and Sue were chiming in on this fertility issue. Um, <laughs> is this their place at all to step in, or no. did Will need to be like hit in the face, or what? What are you guys thinking here? I I mean, I gotta give it to Sue. I mean, we love her for who she mm-hmm. is and all of her unnecessary uh, digs at Will and his you know problems right but i think it it definitely not their place and but you know when it's not their place sue's gonna be there to like throw her two cents in Mm -hmm. so i think it was just really for entertainment value okay yeah well i i I was under the impression and maybe i'm wrong that he had um reached out to them in the faculty room for some help I think um, sometimes he's a little bit of a clueless little boy. Like, why is she upset with me? What did I just do wrong, huh? Right. But <laughs> right. if you think about it, they did do it in a high school. So <laughs> you, they're on the, those grounds. People are, are going to get involved. And, of course, Becky's the one who catches them. Oh, Although I feel like if Becky saw it, she'd be like, let me get in on this. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's crazy. I know. <laughs> well, yeah, she's always connected to the sexual and 
innuendos know. of the night. Of, of course. There were so now, many sexual nowadays. references in tonight's episode. Oh, my so gosh. So okay, many. yeah, but so hilarious, many. by the way, Sue's comments about, she's reminiscing about a Michael Bolton being inseminating <laughs> oh, her. I forgot. I forgot about that. How could that not be mentioned? Thank you. And Kenny G playing That's why yes. I love you. Right. So Kenny G, she describes the scene of when she's impregnated by Michael Bolton. Oh. And Kenny G is at the base of their bed playing the okay, saxophone. I can't. The thing with Sue does, she makes everything so visual. I it's know. disturbing. And I, know. I, I love how she's like, and he had his big... Long <laughs> voice, <laughs> silky voice. I know. I was like, wait, um, but did they really I, go there? That's why I was glad that they put this in because we're not seeing enough of Sue and Beast anymore. You know, we're not yeah. seeing enough of these, so I'm, yeah. I'm glad that they are still in it, <laughs> in it to win it, so to say. Um, yeah, we got a lot of Sue last week. Too, yeah, absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. So I'm, I'm glad they're back in full force. Yeah. Um, what about the fact that Emma is pregnant? Do we think that this pregnancy is going to end up? working out and they're going to have a kid is there any way she's going to miscarriage is there any way something uh, what do you guys think that's here? what i'm thinking miscarriage because she got pregnant so fast mm -hmm. that uh, as fast as things come they can go just as easily so i think if huh. we want to really make this pregnancy storyline stretch out you're going to have a miscarriage and then have them keep working this is just another obstacle in their relationship that i think they might have to get through what are you thinking sarah um, I was just trying to think of, um, it just seems like problems are resolved within uh, one episode or two usually in this series. And I feel like something like that is such a heavy thing that would just kind of be looming over like several episodes. And I don't know that they would go there. I, I'm not sure whether they will or whether they won't, but I know that it would be an interesting twist. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that this show always likes to put new different types of storylines on, and I don't think we've seen a miscarriage. Uh, we briefly get Will r reminding us that he's been through this before. He says, are you really pregnant? Because I've been through this before where somebody said they were pregnant and they weren't actually. When Terry. Uh, yeah, exactly. Goodness. Throwback to Terry. Crazy. Um, so I, th th I don't know. I would never put Pascalee to actually take it to that place. Um, right. I hope I hope that they, however it happens, I hope they end up having a kid, mm -hmm. however, whether it's adoption or this child or right. what. Mm -hmm. I do. I would like them to have a child because that's something they want, and I feel like they're. Mm -hmm. I like talk about these people like they're a family. You know? <laughs> right. I'm like, well, if they want we a want kid, them to have babies. Give them their yeah. kid. Um, <laughs> anyway, Glee needs more babies. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking more of real kids, babies. can we move on to uh, their pseudo kids, the seniors? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, just actually briefly before we touch upon the seniors, we have to talk about the fact that we have not seen anybody at McKinley but the seniors. Uh, we are not getting any love from Ryder, from Marley, from Jake, from Unique. I mean, from Kitty. Come on. But does yeah. that bother do, you, though? I'm hearing that it's not bothering most people, so uh, that's what I'm wondering. Are you, are you bothered by this, or are you not even remembering that they're on the show? Honestly, I'm not bothered by it. Yes, they're talented. The the new new direction, they're talented. But we've had a full season dedicated to them. They've had their time in the spotlight, and I think, and they mentioned in a lot tonight that they only have a few episodes left as seniors. So I think focus on right. them. I I um I I will say that I do miss them. I really want to know what's up with um Ryder and Jake and Marley, but. Being that there are only a few episodes with the seniors in that choir room, I'm glad that we're mostly focusing on them. Yeah, you would think maybe a couple cameos and songs, but nope, we're not getting any of that. All bad. Um, yes. and, They're uh, swaying in the background right now. Yeah, I have to say, honestly, I don't care. I don't <laughs> care that we're not seeing them. I know that we'll see them again. Mm -hmm. I, I like that they're on the back burner and that we see them in the audience and whatever. I'm liking mm -hmm. that they're reminding us, hey, they're sitting over here, but... Give me the seniors. I will take the seniors. I love these seniors. So that right. that brings right. us to, of course, we've got Artie. We have Sam. We have Blaine. We have Tina. And we have Becky. Mm -hmm. um, who is uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, my so freaking fabulous. <laughs> I'm a little confused about after last week's episode where Tina and Artie are so good, how Artie's getting left out of the trio between Sam, Tina, and Blaine this week. Uh, can somebody explain that to me a little bit? I don't know an explanation for it either. Yeah. Um, you guys were uh, kind of confused by that too? Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I mean, I get the episodes called trio, so you're going to have to form a trio between 
four people. And but I feel like it would be gets, a boys trio then, maybe. But, yeah, but like who gets kicked out? Tina, Tina's always like the left out one, I feel like. Which may be why they didn't do that. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Um, It's not that I minded it, it's just like, Mm -hmm. I I almost said mound it. How do you, like, (laughs) mind it is right, right? It's mound it. it. It's been a long (laughs) night, Gleeks. It's been a long night. Um, Okay, so anyway, we've got Sam, we've got Tina. Silky long. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, (laughs) my gosh. Uh, okay, so we've got Sam, we've got Tina, we've got Blaine, and we open up with their jump and jumpin' song, which, by the way, uh, uh-oh, Marissa's face on this right now. I don't even okay. want to keep talking. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous to say how I feel, whether it's good or bad, because your face, so go. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, you got yes, it. it was a fun song. <laughs> what was the point to it? And at the very beginning, I'm like, okay, we're going to start off with a fun song. That's fine. And but I also noticed by the Destiny's Child when they were a trio. Yeah. So I thought that was a nice kind of another trio in there that you didn't really think about Mm -hmm. um there was no point to this yeah they they did say that out loud they said this is just for fun we're not trying to do this for nationals Mm -hmm. but guys it might be time to buckle down a little bit but it was just so random like why why would you do this song anyways right i mean okay so i loved destiny's child back in the day i loved that song but mm-hmm. my whole thought was, yeah, like, why this song? And if you were going to do this song, I would have much rather seen three women doing That's it. That's what I was thinking. Like, mm-hmm. um, you know, unique, Marley, you Marley and, and Tina. Tina. I know. I was thinking that, too. Like, how awesome Even would Kitty. Unique have killed this? Yeah. Even Kitty. I just, uh, or back in the day with Mercedes. Like, how are you going to do Jumpin' Jumpin'? And and not have it be a diva delicious song. Yeah, somebody with some Destiny's Child I, energy. I think it was a throwaway song. I really did which too. Which been is better. crazy because Jumpin' Jumpin' is one of the best songs of all time. Yes, I just said that. <laughs> um, one of the best songs from that CD. That yeah, but CD was I good. mean, come on, man. It's like iconic. And, mm-hmm. and Should we sing it now? <laughs> um, because yeah, it's cause, about his... Okay. No, uh, you can keep going. I'm just going <laughs> to... <laughs> And I, okay, so <laughs> anyway, it's an amazing song, and they it's not that they didn't sing it well, it just was not divalicious, yep, bootylicious, yeah. whatever you want to call right. it, it was not. You got to make the full bootylicious commitment if you're going to do a Destiny Child song. Right, and uh, they, agreed. yeah, and they kind of just, like, and Sam, as pretty as he is, and, and I mean, Blaine, they, like, they didn't cut it. The last Destiny song that the Destiny Child song they did was Survivor, but they killed, killed that. Killed that, I know. It was awesome. Because that's what and it's all about. If you're going to do another Destiny's Child <laughs> song, you found <laughs> Rocky is getting on, the diva attitude uh-huh. in here. If you're going to do another Destiny's Child song, you put on a fabulous show. Yeah, with like the lights and everything. Yeah, yeah, you got to you gotta do it big or you can't do it at all. <laughs> exactly. And unfortunately, this one was a little bit of a letdown. Um, but... Then we find out this is a really cool storyline that they want to do this lock in, which brought me back to my high school years when we did our lock in, which was really awesome. And if Sue had been there to ruin it for me, I would have been pissed. But she does. She says that the whole school can't do a lock in. So instead, what does this trio decide to do? They decide to break in to the school. Uh, mm-hmm. Were you guys a little surprised that they were had the balls to do this? No. 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 I'm okay. Glad. <laughs> I mean, Blaine had his superhero cape. And were we surprised <laughs> no. that Becky had the balls to follow? No. No. <laughs> That's just very, so Becky. Very, very glee of them. So Someone had to catch them. Yeah. Uh, they do break in, though. <laughs> they break in, and um, we get the song, Don't You Forget About Me, which was incredibly breakfast club of them. <laughs> yes. Um, especially because it's taking place in the school. So funky. What did you guys think about this number? How do we feel? I thought it was fun. Um, I thought the uh, fire extinguisher extinguishers were interesting yeah that i was like i have to do that <laughs> um the fire wouldn't work we would just fall right the fire extinguishers to me were good weird the upside down face drawings was bad weird just weird weird just weird weird yeah uh, the chins were disturbing I, I wrote that in my notes disturbing. i didn't understand where did they get that from i feel like they were trying to take a risk and make this like a funky right. um out of this world performance because they're doing they're they're like breaking in and doing like something childlike so. almost yeah um if you guys know if this was a reference to something out there and we're just missing it it's going over our heads which is likely sometimes that does happen to us yeah no offense to any of 
of us. You guys <laughs> no, are wonderful, fabulous people. But <laughs> uh, you guys are the true gleeks out there, and we we could use your help. So of course, always iTunes, YouTube, rate, comment, subscribe. Uh, we read all of your comments. We actually have them printed out here, and hopefully we can get to a few of them in a little bit if we can get through this episode. So let's get back to it. Um, we've got the fire extinguishers. We've got the weird faces, and then Sam in a cheerleading outfit. Yeah, <laughs> which was great. Which was <laughs> which was fabulous. Ow, ow, rocket baby, and then of course we have Becky with her 11 hour energies I didn't even know they made anything past 5 hour energies and her (laughs) twister twister another sexual reference sex in a box obviously this (laughs) show has gone pure sex on us like there was so many random sexual references Becky's just hungry yeah (laughs) She's thirsty. Yeah, she, she is thirsty. She's, she's, uh, she's hungry and thirsty. And she thirsty wants to be fed. For 11-hour energy drinks and for other things. Um, Guys, did anybody else kind of... I mean, I used to feel a little bad for Becky sometimes, but I'm like, Becky, man. She's like, I'm going to call the cops on you. She's getting a little Let's too... Clue. Buck, buck wild for me right now. You think so? Yeah. What, so what did you guys think it's about? It's not. It's past the point of endearing. Like it used to be endearing for me, but now it's just like a little bit too much. It's crazy. Like the- give me some of my old Becky back what? with her arms crossed and just like kinda yeah, like very reserved. The yeah. thing is, Sue can say all these crazy things and very obnoxious and whatnot, and she can get away with it. So why not Becky? Yeah, Becky the has mini Sue. learned from the best uh, rather yeah. than the worst. But mm-hmm. the mini Sue, absolutely, she is that. Um, so I, I do love watch anytime Becky's character's on screen, I know I'm about to cringe, which is like, I'm like, ooh, Becky, what'd you just say, man? Um, but she's so freaking good. <laughs> what'd you just what'd say? You just say? <laughs> well, when she's like playing Twister with Blaine. And, and she lies down. And she's I'll like, I can drink more energy drinks for you. I know, oh I know. Ridiculous. But Blaine's there. And he's like, let me go find my friends for a second. And he leaves to find his friends. And can you guys say out loud what he finds? Because I I really cannot say it out loud. Well, neither can I. I, I, Oh, it's sickening. (laughs) Tina and Sam. Sucking face. They were really... That is the term Like literally sucking sucking face. face. That is where that term come from. They were sucking on each other's faces. It was It was not pretty. Did they have to keep playing that one part? The over. Go back to it and back to it. Gosh, like they have... I mean, I don't know. Face sucking slurpathon. That's what it was called. And it was that indeed. What was the deal with that, guys? I mean, are we going to see this go any further? Or no? No, uh, I, I think not. it's done. I think I it was it was funny system. with the whole boob thing at first because like I I love how Tina's like oh somebody thinks I have boobs you know like it was it was yeah. it was kind of silly and I I enjoyed that part of it but when they kissed it was just so out of nowhere uh-huh. they didn't look like they had chemistry uh, no, at no. all. I have to say <laughs> the second I saw Blaine and Becky playing Twister I go. <sighs> Ooh, <laughs> tell me Sam and Tina aren't hooking up. Tell me. I mean, thank God. It was what I kind of thought mm-hmm. was going to happen was that Becky was going to be the one to leave and she was going to open the closet and the two of them were going to be having sex in the closet just like Will and Emma were. And yeah. I was like, oh no, horrible deja vu. <laughs> like, this, At least they that. didn't go that so, far right, exactly. to having sex with each other. Like, they were just making out. Right. So I, w- I was glad about that. And, I was and al- also honest, jealous that it wasn't me, the other Asian, but, but it was Tina. <laughs> <laughs> I would have swapped places with her. Oh, yeah. Totally. And, but if Which you had Asians? swapped places with her, it wouldn't have looked like sucking face, I hope. <laughs> oh, it was bad. Let's but it was very forced, you could tell. Yeah, yeah, of course. Did Blaine have the right to be mad? Um, yes, I think so a little bit. Yeah, because he was in it. He he wanted to have a fun night with his friends. And then his friends ditched him to be with, and yeah, then but he left was with him Becky. alone with Becky. And then, <laughs> so I can see he felt abandoned and then finding his two friends making out. I mean, I would be upset too. Okay. I think, um, especially at that age, you know, you get territorial. You never want to be the third wheel in high school. Right. Right. Or that's, fifth wheel. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But they end up that he walks out. He's pissed. They do rekindle by the end of the episode, though, which is nice because had he held that grudge, I would have been annoyed. And finally, they invite Artie into the group a little bit. Um, thank goodness, because what did poor Artie do? Why did you not invite him to your break in, your right, the lock in? Yeah. I mean, I felt bad for Artie. And now Artie's going to find out even Becky was there. He's going to be like, what the hell? Right. <laughs> 
I mean, not in that voice I mean, because <laughs> Artie doesn't have an accent like that. So I'm not really sure why that's what I yeah, did Yeah, it is kind of weird that they left him out. I think they just, honestly, they needed a trio. They had to fill the storyline. And so Artie's going to be left out this episode. In fairness, do you think Artie could have been able to climb through the window. I think there's a way that they could have gotten him in. Yeah. I mean, they could have climbed in and then opened or the maybe door, they but they could have left off an alarm. Or written a trio in for Artie. Like, do you think that's why they didn't invite him, though? I don't think that that even crossed their minds, I but I, I do know what you're saying. I so I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll just hope that that's the end of Artie being left out because I, I don't know. My little heart breaks for people when they're left out of the core group. Oh. Yeah, I feel really bad, especially when you're a senior. You know, when you're a freshman, it happens all the right. time. But by your senior year, like, hopefully everybody kind of just. Yeah, this is bonding to... time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Last days left. Okay, so after senior year, what do you do? You pick up and you move to New York. Is that what happens to everybody? Seems that way because. Or LA. Yep. Or, or LA. But we have our tight New York crew. Which, of course, is falling apart at the seams right now. And we see that Rachel and Santana, they're still at it. Uh, they are rivaling hard right now. Yeah, they are. Have we thought at all about who is in the right, who is in the wrong? Because I know I got a bajillion tweets this week about it. And I read <laughs> a right. lot of comments and blogs. Um, and people are really 50-50. Mm -hmm. So, guys, where do we stand as of today? Um, okay, so last week I was Team Santana. A lot of our viewers agreed, and they were <laughs> Team Santana. Um, but again, yeah, there's other people on the other side too. But now I feel like they're both in petty territory. Yeah. And it's like, oh, oh God, God, you guys are just making this worse and worse. Do we have any any special comments from viewers, Team One or Team The Other? There were a lot um, of, on YouTube, there were a lot of Team Santana, but on our website, our AfterBuzz website, there were a lot of Team Rachel. Ooh. Mm. So we're split here. Yeah. Even, even our Seems AfterBuzz split. family is split. Showdown. I, I know. It makes me kind of sad. And I, I really don't know. I, I think that... Where are you at? I want to know where you're at. I, I try to... <laughs> this is what I do when I, when I host... She's Switzerland. Yeah, I'm Switzerland. <laughs> when I host the show, um, I like that the fact that I don't have to make up my mind. I get to to ask questions and then I get to hear both of you educated amazing beautiful women <laughs> describe what the two sides are and then I take it all in but, but nobody ever asks me back so I don't have to ever <laughs> respond so I'm gonna just switch uh, it up here I, I, I plead the fifth um, you know <laughs> I think that honestly when somebody has a dream role it's theirs to have um, so I think that it's a little petty that Santana went after Rachel's role but it wasn't while Rachel was auditioning to get the same role. It was for her understudy position. So right. it wasn't like she was trying to hurt her at the time. But now it does seem like she is trying to hurt her. And that's wrong. And it seems like Rachel's trying to hurt Santana, which is also wrong. Um, yeah, and I, f I, I feel like tonight, I, I mean, I'm going to say I'm still Team Rachel because I felt in tonight's episode, Santana, we see her like plotting all these things to do to piss Rachel off. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... She, right, you think she's more Rachel, malicious and ma manipulative of yeah, the situation? Like, I mean, all, and we'll get to it, but she was planning all these things to make Ra Rachel angry, and Rachel's still hurt right now, and she's not really getting back at Santana, and Santana's getting back at Rachel. Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, it's just it's a tough situation, especially because I do think that they will eventually be friends, but this is precious time, and mm -hmm. yep. I, I just I, f I feel bad. I do feel bad for them. I mean, uh, I think I mentioned this last time, but I, like, Santana for me didn't set out to get Rachel. You know, I think she was just looking for her little slither of the pie. Like, to be an understudy on a show like that is huge. Or to be in seen itself. in front of any casting director. Is sure. Just big, you yeah. know? Right. Um, like, I didn't think she was thinking, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal the main. They're actually gonna role. fire Rachel and hire me. No, I don't think that's what she was thinking right. at the time either. So, but then Rachel was immediately threatened with good reason because Santana is very talented and beautiful. And um, so Rachel reacted, and then Santana, then her ego turned on, and now they're in this bigger mess because now Santana is making her mission, which is wrong, right? To yeah. um, take Rachel down. So now she's being aggressive absolutely um but we do know that rachel has left the apartment and she's now moving in with elliot mm -hmm. who is 
I'm not sure whether it's her new roommate or her new personal assistant. Um, he brings her to her audition, her coffee, her keys, her, you know, all the stuff and makes her her bed and, and sleeps on the couch for her and is doing all these things. Uh, high maintenance Rachel is back in the building, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you guys feel at all like we have retrogressed? Um, like we saw this Rachel before. We we got rid of her a little bit. We didn't really miss that side of Rachel. And now she is back. I think so. I mean, we got that diva Rachel back, and I mean, she. We've seen Rachel in season one when she was very demanding, and she wanted, she always wanted Fanny, and now she finally got Fanny, and then now she has a new gay in her life, so she's gonna use him to the best of her ability. I love that he said it was offensive, by the way, because <laughs> Kurt just was like, I he feels like a pet. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, I just think. I really feel for her because for her character, because she's lost so much recently. Um, that is true. N- mm-hmm. Not only with Finn, but now she's lost her friend, so she might feel so alone. So I feel like in this space of aloneness, she's like just grasping for whatever she control she can. And like, here's Elliot. Yeah, he's and, so nice and so nice and so amazing. Yeah. And I do like this friendship that's forming, and I especially like this song that's coming on Barracuda, baby. Ah, oh, I, I have to awesome. say that. The day that Adam leaves the show is going to be a very sad day for me because his voice gets inside of me and fills me up. Um, you know, Sexual reference totally, for after buzz. Totally. Sorry. You know how some <laughs> people's voices, like even though technically maybe other people's voices are better or whatever, some people's voices just do it for people. And and yeah. Adam Lambert's voice just yeah does it for me. It's so his stand-out. range, like when he was on American Idol. Like that's what he was known for, and I feel like they're picking and and his rock, his, his rock, rock yeah. element. Mm-hmm. To him. She wants him to do a Fanny Bryce song, and he's like, "Let's do something rock and roll." Yeah, that middle finger to you, baby. Like, <laughs> yeah, and they play off of each other so well. Like I almost wish that they they were gonna be like an item or something, but I mean, yeah. oh, obviously that's, that's impossible. Oh, that's, that was my question. Uh, do you think they're gonna be the next power? Duo. Well, you mean duo in terms of music, in not in singing, terms of relationship. But, singing. Uh, oh, singing. Oh, no, because oh, I don't think it. we'll get him forever. Okay. So I don't think they'll pair them. But I, I do hope we have a couple more numbers with them. Um, I I just didn't think, honestly, even though I love Leah Michelle, I didn't think this was her best performance. I think he just completely outshined her. And she was in her, like, button-up thing, and this was such a rock song. Mm -hmm. And he has the rasp and the vibe, and I know she can get there, but she's so in Fanny. I almost think they do that on purpose. She's so in Fanny Bryce's place right now that she can't even be, like, grungy and dirty, you know? Mm. But she did try. I mean, I got to give it to Rachel. I mean, Leah Michelle, she's an amazing singer, and she hit all those high notes, but she was rocking out, too. I mean, she was on the floor kind of writhing around and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I think energy-wise, she, she was good. Um, but it's just not her element the way um, I don't think Adam we've Lambert ever seen is. Rachel rock out. Yeah, I would love to see her really, like, hair-flipping, rocking well, out. Well, actually, when she was she first did her sexy number with uh, – Kate Hudson, though, oh. like when she was trying to prove that for me. I mean, it's not rocking yeah, out, but I, but I think she was getting like gritty. Yeah, but I mean, just like dirty as in like actual filth. <laughs> like, like rock and roll dirt. Um, yeah, yeah, but we'll, yeah. We'll see what we actually get with that. But uh, overall, the song was really great. Mm-hmm. Um, but the next thing we know, he's playing middleman here, and Elliot goes, and Santana finds out. That he needs the money, and instead she wants to give him money and pay him to rehearse with him. Is that mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. So run lines, yeah, run lines. Which brings us to the restaurant, the restaurant that Santana and Rachel still both work at, even though they're on Broadway. Huh? Gotta, uh, mm-hmm. gotta pay the bills, I guess. Uh, Maybe they're not on payroll sure. yet. Sure, <laughs> sure, something like that. <laughs> I remember is, briefly. Like, Santana, how the heck can you afford to pay Elliot? <laughs> I know. I mean, you live in New York. Yeah, okay, right. well, I can answer all of those questions right From now. From her to stat. No, the Santana thing was, Commercial. remember, her parents told her that they would pay her a crap ton of money yeah. if she didn't leave to go, so whatever that was, I'm sure there's money from that. And um, in terms of actually why they're working at this place still, I remember Rachel quickly dropped the comment that um, whoever was running the show, one of the people who's running the play said that it would be very Fanny Bryce to still work a job so as uh, study for her character she should keep her day job. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of a force but I don't care because (laughs) this was such 
I mean, a cool freaking scene. We we open the tonight's episode with a song because how awesome is Gloria? I mean, oh. guys, favorite. So good. This is my night this is my favorite. favorite. Me so too. It was it was so good. Um, and and just their emotions, their facial expressions, them tugging at poor Elliot, Kurt just sitting there watching yeah. all this. The it, back and forth, the mm-hmm. yeah. Tell me about how you guys feel. You you guys loved it. Why? Just the just the staging of it all in in that little Broadway coffee shop, whatever diner. Whenever anything is done in there, it's staged. Like the way it's staged is so perfect. It really captures like the Broadway stage element. It's I not feel a like. force that they're singing because that's what would happen in that restaurant. Yeah. So you know, as opposed to sometimes they bring in a song, we're like, but yeah, they do that. This is like, yep, I agree. And it kind of makes me feel like Rent, where you know they're in a restaurant and then they get out and spontaneous singing. They jump on tables and dance around it, but people love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought it was amazing. I really thought this was an incredible performance and. You could see, like, the love-hate between Santana mm-hmm. and Rachel. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And Elliot really being stuck in the middle of yeah. all this. Um, and, and that just keeps getting further with between <laughs> Kurt. And then we've got Danny, by the way. Danny, oh, yeah. thank you for coming back to my life. <laughs> um, people now, <laughs> Pamela Lansbury, they don't want this negative energy, and I don't blame them. Why would you want Santana and Rachel in your band when they're just going to sit there and always be trying to one-up each other and make it about them and and bickering and whatnot? Uh, Do you right. guys think it was right that they kicked them out of Pamela Lansbury? Um, I yes. mean, it, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> yes, yeah. period, end of sentence. It sucks so that it had to happen, but you don't need, like, you need harmony in your group, like, literally and figuratively in order to survive. Like, you can't have this crazy thing going on and right and expect the like musical chemistry and like writing chemistry and performance chemistry to still be sincere and like and and like good for the audience mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and you know what because now that they're on broadway they really don't need the band yeah that's really true too and whether you are team santana or rachel that's the point where that they're now on broadway and that's what's happening, you know. Whether you think that they should, one should be there, one shouldn't. Rachel and Santana, they are both on Broadway. Those are the facts. Can we not just take that for what it is and move on? You know, it just—I I feel like that's what's happening. You're both on Broadway. You're not seeing the bigger picture. You're both on Broadway. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares? Mm-hmm. You know. Um, so I wish they were eventually going to leave the band, anyways. No, it, it that maybe, but it's more. Who cares about this stupid drama? Can't you both look at each other and laugh about the fact that, holy crap, we both made it. Like, yeah, yeah. Let, let's do this with our friends. Let's do what we want because I'm happy for you. I'm happy for me. But obviously, that's not what's happening. They get kicked out of the band. Um, right. Danny, who's still dating Santana, forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and then we've got another trio, mm-hmm. yep. which brings us back to another song. Unfortunately, after the Gloria song that we see in New York. This was my least favorite song of the episode, guys. The Happening. Somebody talk about this that isn't me, please. Okay, I I agree. This was definitely the (coughs) least memorable. I mean, it wasn't bad. It was just the least memorable number out of all of them. Only because a lot of points. It was more old classic, you know. Yeah, but the Supremes are one of the best bands of all time. I mean, I love the Supremes. But it it was more classic, more adult more uptight kind of deal and mm-hmm. compared to all the other numbers that were like fun rocking out and it wasn't flashy as a new band it wasn't that flashy number that pamela lansbury started off with a very flashy yeah. high-paced energy song and then their new band started off with this kind of serious more uptight kind of song and i you know i just didn't like it i couldn't agree with you less <laughs> oh, okay. okay. It wasn't my favorite of the night, but I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because probably it is classic, and like I said, I'm kind of an old soul sometimes. Right. And it's the Supremes, and for me, like their voices, um, like Danny, Demi Lovato, like her voice is yeah. so good. It and, is. Her voice is and so unique, good. and she and um, same thing with you know, and Adam Lambert was in this with with um. 
ludicrous. And I just feel like they just, th those voices in combination with each other were, it was gorgeous. I almost felt like the point of it, though, was to not be as good because they're not as good as a trio as they are as Pamela Lansbury. Yeah. I took it as, well, because I thought they were good. Like, the, for me, the point was... We don't need you? Yeah. Like, well, we look look what you can achieve if you just, if you guys just work together. Mediocrity. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, it was, like, amazing. Like, I loved it. Okay. <laughs> My, I think another thing that I was like, Demi was only just there. She didn't have a big storyline. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to have Demi there you might as well give her something to do all she did was sing this one song which didn't y utilize her talents and we know she's capable of a lot of things anyway i think this was a throwaway song for demi's performance yeah I, I agree with that too i do agree so i guess we're gonna have to agree to disagree and again would love to hear from you guys and what you guys are thinking about it did they try to botch this a little bit on purpose or was it amazing and they're saying hey look what we can do without you let us know um a quote from this that Santana said when she was talking to Elliot that I thought was really interesting. She said, life is very high school, just with bigger stakes. What do mm -hmm. you guys think about that? Yeah, um, that's true. It, do you think that that's valid or do you think that that's Santana being in her early 20s and not really knowing what life is yet? Um, I think... Hmm. She should watch an episode I think of it's, Girls. I think it's... Yeah, I <laughs> think really. it's that. I think that she is just fresh out of high school and, if, and she still hasn't... She hasn't learned quite yet how to break free from that. Unfortunately, there is also the reality that a lot of people don't grow out of their high school petty relationship quarrels. Right, right, habits. absolutely. Um, and, and we see that they, seeing that they aren't in high school anymore, they don't have just like a bunch of girls hanging around. And Santana and Rachel, neither of them have any girlfriends other than each other. Uh, we hear that Quinn lives an hour away, but they never call her. Uh, Brittany, we never see. Mercedes they don't talk to so they and they really in New York they never made other girlfriends mm -hmm. um that moment really struck a chord with me I, I felt awful for them because you know I have a lot of guy friends in my life um I'm uh, sometimes I'd be considered more of a guy's girl than a girl's girl because I, I'm whatever but sometimes the opposite mm -hmm. and I, I don't care how many guy friends I have sometimes I just need my freaking girl time with somebody you know mm -hmm. and and it sucks if you even if you only have one best girlfriend that's enough um, but sometimes you just need that one, that one girlfriend that you can just be with. And right. it's sad that they're they're about to lose that and they're not willing to put their egos aside to stop that. Yeah. It makes me wonder if they are going to, because they, they do, they have started to expand the circles outside of the, the Glee kids. You know, we have Star Child now and Elliot and um, we did have um, Kurt's love interest before, oh, right. whatever his name right. was. Right. Um, but I wonder if they're going to continue to keep or bringing Rachel's people prostitute. in. Mm -hmm. oh, Rachel's shit. sexy prostitute, Brody. <laughs> Brody. Ugh. That was his name. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, wonder, I wonder that too. I mean, we know we have another season, so. Right, yeah. maybe Santana will get a new bestie and maybe Rachel will. Maybe they'll develop their own little sex in the city group. Who knows? Well, I think it's realistic to life because once you leave high school, you're not going to be talking to everyone that you, you were used to talking to every single day in high school. And that there was the line that high school's the glue. Right, it's, it's really true and it's bizarre to see the juxtaposition of these seniors versus these New York crew. The seniors are saying we're always going to be friends, which is exactly what the New York crew said, and now they're not. Uh, there was another weird line mm -hmm. that struck me funny when Kurt says, we agreed that we were going to be best friends for two years. Like, what does that mean? Who Who's like, let's be best friends for two years. Shake <laughs> on it. Like, right. you know, when I make best friends, I hope they're for life, you know? Like, right. It's kind of a hope you have. Unless um, they were talking about the apartment situation. Oh, maybe they didn't sign the lease for two years. But mm -hmm. That was probably mm -hmm. more realistic. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you're on it. You're absolutely on it. Um, but then our last song of the night is all, it's both, back home and in New York and it's Hold On um, and I was so stoked to end with this because I thought it was a really great number. How did you guys feel? This song is always great no matter what situation you're in it be it karaoke or in a okay. Glee episode or like you're just hanging out. Like seriously this song makes me happy instantly. Yeah. So I enjoyed it. I, I mean it was fun and I loved how it because the last song always relates to everyone and just wraps the whole show up. Um Every time I hear the song, it just reminds me of Bridesmaids, the movie. Yeah, me too, me too. I mean, so, right. I mean, it's a fun song, and it really does relate to everyone. I just hope 
you know, sorry to backtrack a little bit, but I just hope that Rachel and Santana can actually utilize that and realize that in the end they're fighting now, but they are going to be friends. Right. I thought that this might actually be some foreshadowing, telling the audience, which is us, of course, hold on, you know, mm-hmm. we're, don't give up on these people yet. We'll get you there. Just just wait through it. Um, That's interesting. Because... Mm-hmm. Uh, some I try to think of these relevancy the relevancy to these songs. Sometimes I'm like, hmm, hold on, what's go? But then I think they're they're saying to us like, mm-hmm. okay, just one more day. Yeah. Trust us, you know. And and we do, we do trust them. So, mm-hmm. um, I think that pretty much covers tonight's episode. Unless anybody has um anything that I was forgetting. Oh, well, I, I think just that Rachel and Santana they did find that one minute that they were actually civil to each other and i think had we gotten another 30 seconds or another minute before everyone else came back into the apartment that i think they, they might could have up. resolved it mm-hmm. well we but. we don't know for sure but hopefully um but instead we have santana sitting with a homeless guy who's drinking a bottle <laughs> while she's singing hold on which was bizarre but that's fine um yes yeah, so i think York. i think for them for rachel and santana singing that song was more introspective like yeah absolutely. hold on absolutely like, you'll, absolutely you'll be okay um but i do want to quickly get to some news and gossip uh before we get to our predictions because i know we had a lot last week but we were running out of time so guys tell me what do, what do you got for me my news and gossip Partners well, over here. I think we all know Leah Michelle's new CD finally came out. It's available. I haven't listened to it yet because it's On so iTunes. busy. I know. But I heard it's freaking phenomenal. I listened to the four that she's already released, her four singles. And right now, the four songs that I know, Battlefield is my favorite song. I mean, I can't stop listening to it. So I cannot wait to get the CD mm-hmm. after tonight's Amazing. show. Amazing. Uh, and the yeah. one that everybody's sort of buzzing about is the song about Corey Monteith. Which is she almost even put on the album, but then she did. Yeah, which is if you say so. And um, as many fans know, those were actually the last words that Corey spoke to to her to Leah. Um, And I've actually listened to the song, and it's just so gut wrenching to think about the meaning behind. I I Mm. I am really appreciative of the fact though that we keep him in our hearts and we keep him relative Mm -hmm. because it's important. You know, it's important even though sometimes it does hurt and even though it is gut wrenching, it's hard to talk about. Yeah, uh, that she was able to do that. I think it it's really big. And for her, like she's um, it's popping up in articles everywhere. Lay Michelle says how therapeutic um this album has been. Um, for her in just like sorting through those emotions right absolutely Um, and i can there's a quote here she says listening to it it's therapeutic and difficult because it will always represent the most devastating thing that's ever happened to me in my whole life and probably ever will Mm -hmm. you know how do you even get past that but she's she's doing an amazing job and the fact that she's still performing on the show and doing as well as she is it just speaks uh character to her character so Mm -hmm. great for her um, is that our news and gossip for this week? Um, I, I read something else last week that we couldn't get to. Um, it, I think it was just a teaser with Sam might have a new love interest. That like, isn't Penny because we dropped her really quick. Yeah, and I, I love how they address that. But like someone from Sam's past will be coming back and might spark something. Well, we've got the 100th episode coming up, not next week, but the week after Mercedes? that. Mercedes? And mm-hmm. I don't know. I was because I know, we know we have Heather on it too, so oh, you, yeah, okay. you never know. We'll, we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Um. But can we get to some predictions, guys? Yeah. So now, we just mentioned that TV. in two weeks we have the hundredth episode, but next week we've got national stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. Somehow we're in LA. Of course we're in LA because national <laughs> and Mercedes comes out with her. Fawawa, which is her fake chihuahua, <laughs> little stuffed animal. I don't even know what what's going on there. Oh it's a trendy thing. I'm just happy to have yeah. Mercedes. Like, oh, right. yes, yeah. love of my life. We need a big, uh, I'm predicting or hoping for a big Mercedes number. Oh, absolutely. They're not going to, they they would not pull I mean, on our heartstrings and not give us that. I would kill them. I'd be so upset. <laughs> why bring Mercedes back if she's not going to yeah. sing? I know. Why, but she why couldn't we just say jumping, jumping for her? I don't understand. Why couldn't um, they oh wait gosh. for next week for her to sing that song? I know. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. But we know that they're going against Throat Explosion. And I actually just watched Pitch Perfect this week. And I'm like, oh my God, that's the guy from Pitch Perfect. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's exciting that they are going against such a. 
throat explosion of an experience. I, I, I just love the names of all of these acapella right. groups. They're so yeah. funny. Yeah, and um, their gestures when they say it too. Throat I know. explosion. Exactly. Um, <laughs> any other predictions for next week or for the 100th, guys? Well, I, I, we already mentioned that I think Elman's going to miscarriage. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Such a sad storyline. I know. Um, I think what you that got from you, Miss Sarah? they're gonna kill it during nationals. Oh, I thought we were still talking about the baby. Oh, um, <laughs> we we'll, we'll moved on to nationals. Good. good. Oh my God! What in? Are, um, are we winning? Are we okay. taking home the championship? We are Ooh, the champions. Yeah. Um, we don't we know better. It's, but I do that's have. That's hard to say. I have a prediction. I predict that Stephanie Wanger will be sitting next to me next week, oh, yes. which is amazing. You know Our what? Stephanie. I have a feeling you might be right. Oh, please. Thank you. <laughs> our, our our lovely host is coming back, um, yeah. and we miss her. Anyway, though, we, we love you guys. We'll be a quartet again. Yes, we will be a quartet. We are a trio tonight. Very fitting, but we'll be a quartet, which is what we need. <laughs> um, but really, we mm. need more than four of us. We need all of us. We need you guys at home. Uh, we love you so much. You've been such amazing fans. If you could go to our iTunes, rate, comment, subscribe. We love that five star. And if you go to our YouTube, comment there. We comment back a lot of times, and we just love to read all of them and know what you guys are thinking. Uh, You are the best Gleeks ever. Mm -hmm. And where can we talk to you if we need to during the week? Uh, You can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at SarahFeenyTV. And you can follow me on Twitter at Sarah with an H Mendoza. And you can find me at Roxy Stryer. And until next week, same time, same place. Good night, guys. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later, Gleeks! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.